Hey everyone, it's Sevi. The Cephos Moonlight, Wandering Even Star, and Makaira Aquamarine are the newest 4 star limited series additions in the Sumeru patch. They all come with EM secondary stats to emphasize their reaction enhancing playstyles, and their passives bring an interesting support utility by buffing your party members based on the user's EM stat. In this video, I'll be reviewing these weapons and characters they're recommended to equip on. This won't be one of those side by side damage comparison videos, but rather a general overview of how you can best utilize the weapons if you manage to pull one. I also discourage trying to snipe these weapons if you aren't pulling for the banner's 5 star weapon in the first first place, as 4 star weapon rates can be pretty horrible and very unlucky. Anyway, let's get into it. We'll first start with the sword Sifos Moonlight. This weapon adds energy recharge to the user based on the holder's EM stat. It also adds ER to the user's party members, though the ER they get is reduced into 30% of what the holder gets. On this table, and assuming the weapon is at R1, you can see how much ER gets added by increments of 200 EM. At a high EM, it adds a sizable amount of ER. Every refinement increases the total ER given by 25% of R1. From R1, the ER provided is essentially doubled. Many people don't see ER as an offensive stat because it merely increases the amount of energy given by particles. However, being able to get your burst up on cooldown means that you ensure your unit's damage uptime remains consistent. Essentially, this weapon's supportive utility is, at the end of the day, actually geared towards helping increase your team's offense. One of Sifo's Moonlight's direct competition is the craftable Sword Iron Sting. They even have the same attack and EM stats. The main difference is that the Iron Sting is geared towards buffing the user's elemental damage while the Cephos buffs ER. One effect can be better depending on which the user and team need more, but the Iron Sting as a free-to-play weapon will always be the more accessible option. Furthermore, it's like a love child of Iron Sting and Favonia Sword. The Favonia series is one of the best weapon series due to how incredible its energy and battery utilities are by creating universal particles. The Cephos doesn't work like this, but the result is somewhat similar albeit to a lower degree. If the point of comparison is how well it addresses a team's ER needs, the Favonia Sword is still more advantageous. On Cephos, the user needs a high EM stat to give their teammates a significant enough ER buff improvement, which is why its best users are units you naturally stack a lot of EM on. However, the Faf Sword's procs are worth 6 energy, which is affected by ER too, but it needs crit hits to proc. At high refinements, the chances to proc increase while the cooldown also shortens, which translates to more potential energy particles generated every rotation. On the other hand, Cephos does not rely on crit to proc, eliminating any worry needed about crit rate. Some express their concerns about needing to build crit rate to reliably proc the Fab Swords passive. On units that have AoE hits in a short amount of time, like Kazuha, this is less of a worry. But on units that aren't as AoE oriented and who you don't naturally build crit on, it can be a concern. Hence, the Cephos is more convenient as its effect is always active anyway. Not necessarily better in every way with energy generation, but more convenient. So to have a sword that kind of imitates the Fab Sword's utility while giving the user a good amount of EM is a nice consolidation of weapon functions. Next, let's quickly run through who this weapon will be good on. Take note, just because it's recommended for them, it doesn't make it their best weapon in all cases. Sometimes other weapons are situationally more beneficial or vice versa. For instance, a weapon that gives damage bonus is better than an EM weapon for an aggravate unit, since damage bonus boosts both raw damage and aggravate damage. Another example is that Fab Sword is significantly better for addressing energy needs on units or teams with high ER requirements. And of course, your unit's artifact stats are also a factor. So so in general, this sword can be a good alternative, but it's not always the best choice in every scenario. A priority are units that naturally stack high EM in either their best build or one of their best builds. Kazuha immediately comes to mind, and he's clearly a perfect user for this weapon. Many players use Kazuha on Iron Sting and mostly get his ER from substats, but Cephos is a great middle ground for players who want a bit more ER without committing to the whole chunk of ER that Favonius gives. A lot of his teams are energy hungry, and Kazuha himself appreciates ER to help him burst as often as possible. So if you're Kazuha on Iron Sting sometimes comes up short with his burst timing, building Cephos for him is a very good idea. 
For a full EM burst gene build, she would likely want a high ER weapon due to her more demanding energy needs. However, in cases where you can fulfill her desired ER stat through good artifact pieces and the weapon's passive combined, then the Cephos is a good choice. It's also okay on a Hyper Bloom or Aggravate Cookie build. On a Hyper Bloom build, Cookie won't use the ER, but in Aggravate, it is much more helpful since she relies on her burst uptime to deal lots of aggravates. Aggravate Kaching could also use it, but the Iron Sting beats it in terms of damage. And you neither stack high EM on her nor does she require a significant amount of ER, so Sifos will be underutilized. Animo or Dendro MC could also equip it, assuming you can ensure the rest of their ER needs are met through artifact stats. It's workable on Nilu, but the ER increase will be very small, since Nilu is mostly building HP, not EM, so the benefit on her is mainly its EM stat. In niche cases, there's a possibility to use the Cephos on a Melt Kaya build or Vape slash Thundering Fury Bennett build too. Now moving on to the Wandering Even Star, the Catalyst version, and the Makaira Aquamarine, the Claymore version of this series. Both of them are identical in stats and passive effect, but now instead of buffing ER based on the user's EM, they buff the attack stat of the user and party members. At R1, here's how much they give. Each refinement gives a 25% increase to how much attack is buffed, and at R5, it doubles the value. These complement units that can make use of both the EM and attack stats and who are also comped with attack scaling party members. The attack it gives your teammates isn't really impressive at R1, but it is something. With high refinements, it gets a bit more impressive with increasing your team's overall damage output, but that's going into whale or extreme luck territory. Let's go through who the Wandering Even Star's viable users are. Again, it's not necessarily their best 4-star weapon, as many other good 4-star catalysts exist, like the Sacrificial Fragments or the Widsith in certain cases. Sucrose is a viable candidate, but I'd still recommend the Sacrificial Fragments over the Even Star, since the Sac Frag skill reset and higher EM stat have more utility. Still, the Wandering Even Star is an okay next option. It's the same case for Bloom builds of Barbara and Kokomi by virtue of giving EM, but Sac Frags is again more preferable. It's fine with Heizo too, as he relies on his swirl damage and attack scaling abilities, both of which the weapon addresses. It can be workable on those with reaction playstyles like Yai, Miko, Lisa, Yanfei, or Klee, but there are generally equal or better alternatives. It's likely this will be one of Nahida's good 4-star weapons, so we just have to wait for more official details on her kit. Lastly, for viable users of the Makaira Aquamarine. There are fewer optimal users for this since many of the Claymore users we have don't really use a full EM build, and without high EM and a low refinement, the attack gains from this are very marginal. I do think there are two top users right now. The first is Sayu on a full EM roll build. She's able to utilize both the EM and attack buff it gives. However, it's tougher on a healer build Sayu due to her energy needs. Forgoing an ER weapon means you'll have to get her ER from artifacts. Another potential user is the EM Razor build, aka Thundering Furry Razor. It's a very niche playstyle, but the EM stat is usable there, and it's an alternative to the Rain Slasher or Blood Tainted Greatsword. There are cases like equipping it on a Melt Chong Yun or Vape Diluc. But these are units you don't stack that much EM on even in a reaction playstyle, and so the weapon's passive doesn't give as much. Other 4-star options can be close or noticeably better like the Aqua Maru for Chong Yun or Rain Slasher on Diluc. The Claymore will hopefully find more optimal users in the future that have high EM builds as their best builds. As a final reminder, these weapons effects can actually be stacked. This is interesting because usually, weapon effects of the same type don't stack. So there are potential teams out there that could benefit from having multiple users of this weapon series. As such, I don't advise you to refine multiple copies right away. I think the safest route is to have at least two separate copies. If you have three or more, one can be refined and leveled up while the other remains at R1. You may find yourself wanting to have two users of the same weapon on a team one of these days. Of of course, that might never happen, but I'd err on the side of caution for now. All in all, these weapons are decent and interesting, combining offensive and support utilities that are best on units that really want to stack high EM. I wouldn't say they're crazy must-pulls, especially since they're up against tough competition, but they are nice to have if you were lucky enough. And it's likely we'll have more units down the line with kits that can best maximize this weapon series potential as Hoyo releases more characters with EM-focused playstyles. 
That's going to be all for this video, everyone. If you're able to pull them, let me know what you think about the weapons down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care.